Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Evie, and I'm a medical graduate from Israel. I've been working in Dr. Jenny Kim's lab at UCLA since May of last year. And today we'll be discussing, um, the title has changed a little bit since uh, the research has evolved since, and we wanted to make it a little bit more concise. Uh, P-acne cell components from acne-associated phytotypes and how they induce a distinct inflammatory response. So um, the quest for bacterial ligands potentially implicated in the uh, inflammatory pathogenesis of acne vulgaris has been ongoing for quite some time now. However, today without much success. The ramifications of finding such a ligand is clear as this is a condition which inflicts millions of people around the globe and these newly discovered potential ligands can serve as therapeutic targets for the creation of novel pharmaceutical treatments in the future. The aim of our study was to do precisely that, uh, investigate and discover potentially new components within the bacteria which may serve as implicators and instigators of the inflammatory cascade. We know from previous data that uh, P-acne stimulation of host immune response leads to the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, mainly mediated by TLR2, but also by uh, uh, NLRP3 within antigen-presenting cells. So what we first did was uh, kind of sway our attention towards uh, the literature in order to help us zoom in and focus on specific components within the bacteria which uh, could potentially serve as ligands and as instigators of inflammation. And we found several studies which pointed to um, the peptidoglycan component, cell wall component, as uh, an activator via TLR2 pathway and secretion of cytokines. And other studies, not done specifically in acne, but in similar bacterium, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, have also shown that lipids might play a, a role here as well. Uh, via the TLR2-4 uh, pathway in human macrophages. Compounded by all of this, uh, recent data has also shown that not all P. acne phylotypes uh, are created equal, uh, as my uh, predecessor, uh, Professor Agak, excellently uh, presented. We know that um, there are different groups or subgroups of P. acnes, those associated with healthy skin, uh, pH and isolates associated with acne, which will from here on for, forth re, uh, refer to as PA. And these two subgroups um, were found to induce a distinct immune response, namely that the pH group had uh, elicited a uh, anti-inflammatory cytokine profile, higher uh, levels of IL-10, lower levels of IL-17 interferon gamma, whereas the PA uh, subgroup induced higher levels of IL-17 interferon gamma and lower levels of IL-10. The aim of our project was therefore to investigate and identify any potential components within the bacteria uh, which could be implicated in the induction of inflammatory responses and to test whether these components elicit a differential outcome with respect to the two healthy and acne phylotype groups where our hypothesis was of course that the PA strains will elicit a uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine profile, and the PH strains will elicit an anti-inflammatory cytokine profile. Our methods uh, included extraction of precipitates via a hot phenol method. Uh, those of you who work with phenol surely know that um, when we um, get our samples and after we spin them down, we have uh, several phases. Uh, within our tube, we have the aqueous phase on top, which is um, uh, a host for uh, soluble matters such as carbohydrates and nucleic acids. We have the inner phase in between, which is a bunch of mishmashed all together. We have cell debris, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, whatnot. We try to avoid this uh, inner phase here as much as we could, so to not contaminate our samples. And we also have on the bottom the uh, organic phase or the phenol phase, uh, which uh, as we know phenol is a uh, strong solvent for lipids and proteins and that's the predominant composure of uh, the substances in this phase. We then took um, six strains, three from pH and three from PA. 
um, and derived precipitates from the aqueous strains, of, sorry, from the aqueous phase, which we believe is predominantly carbohydrates, and we've extracted a precipitate from the uh, phenol phase, which we are still currently investigating what that precipitate exactly is. We believe it is predominantly uh, composed of lipids, um, and I'll touch a little bit about that later, but it might also be a, a glycolipid of some sort. Um, so like I said, we extracted from the aqueous phase and the organic phase components um, uh, from uh, three strains in each group, the pH and the PA. Uh, we then autoclaved the samples, treated them with DNAs, RNAs, proteinase K in order to eliminate any potential contaminants. From the aqueous phase, we took um, what we believe to be as carbohydrates and we checked the, uh, uh, the concentration against the standardized commercial kit. Um, we also collaborated with the, um, on this project with Glycoanalytics Core at UCSD. They did the main uh, analysis of our data and um, we analyzed our carbohydrate isolates via HPA pad, uh, gas chromatography mass spec, and linkage analysis. And from the uh, phenol phase uh, extracted uh, precipitate, we also uh, checked for lipid content via fatty acid GCMS. Isolate protein was assessed via the Bradford method and showed uh, very little to no protein in our samples. What we then went ahead and did was uh, take uh, these extracts from the aqueous and the organic phase and stimulated PBMCs at various doses um, and harvested the supernatant at different time points, day one and day seven, and uh, ran a bunch of ELISAs to see what we're getting. As you can see, our results are, are quite interesting. From the uh, uh, aqueous phase, the carbohydrates, we saw a higher secretion of IL-6 and IL-17 uh, almost exclusively within the um, uh, PA group. What we see here is we have our cells alone uh, control group, and then we have the three healthy strains and the three acne strains. This pattern will repeat itself in the future graphs, and we see here clearly is that the acne strains showed a higher secretion of IL-6 and IL-17. From the organic phase extracts, we saw higher secretion of IL-1 beta, IL-10, IL-12 P40, and IL-17, also again exclusively within the uh, acne group versus the healthy. We then sent our sample for further analysis to UCSD um, and ran uh, HPA pad, uh, competition monosaccharide analysis, to better define what these molecules are showing us this, uh, uh, this response. And the uh, pH phylotypes uh, came up with higher concentration of galactose and lower concentration of glucose. The PA phylotypes had lower concentration of galactose and higher concentration of glucose. And again, not to get too much detail behind the biochemistry, the point of doing this was to better characterize our samples and see if they have a different molecular composition as well. Um, and maybe through that explain the differential cytokine secretion profile that we saw. We also sent the carbohydrate residues um, and ran a um, uh, linkage analysis via GCMS, and that showed that the PA phylotype <coughs> had uh, relatively higher galactose patterns as compared to the pH phylotypes. Uh, there were more 6-gal and 4-6-gal connections, uh, linkages in the PA group as compared to the pH group. And again, this was just to better characterize the molecules. Uh, this may serve as a platform also in the future to target potentially these links um, and these characteristics for future experiments is to verify that what we're seeing here really is carbohydrate and not some other contaminant. From the uh, phenol phase extracted precipitate, we ran GCMS of fatty acids, and we saw that the PA phylotype consisted only of palmitic and steroidic fatty acid residues. Our next step would be to design and execute an experiment to break up the link of the carbohydrate residues. Uh, as we saw in the previous slide, the linkage analysis showed that there were specific links um, 
that were uh, distinct for each subgroup. So our next uh, step would be to um, design, execute an experiment via a pariodate, sodium pariodate, which breaks up links between carbohydrate residues, and then to basically run our experiment again and see if the uh, ELISA response are we seeing if there's a reduction in the uh, cytokine profile that we're seeing. And that would confirm our uh, suspicion that indeed it is carbohydrates that we're dealing with here. And with uh, the proposed lipid samples, um, we, we would like to treat them with lipase, uh, and then again run the experiment to see if we're getting a reduced ELISA response. We're also considering um, uh, trying a, a more conventional method of isolating lipids uh, via methanol chloroform, or by diluting uh, the phenol phase and extracting the lipids uh, through a dialysis tube that way, and then confirming again when we have a different way of attacking and getting the precipitate running the experiment one more time and seeing that the lipids are indeed the ones in the sample that are causing uh, the response that we've seen. So in conclusion, carbohydrate extracts from PA acne-associated strains stimulated production of IL-6 and IL-17. Organic phase solute extracts from PA acne-associated strains stimulated higher levels of IL-1 beta, IL-10, IL-12, P40, and IL-17 as compared to their healthy counterpart. We ran one experiment on the uh, organic phase solute extracts where we treated them with DNAs, RNAs, and proteinase K, and uh, there was no uh, difference in the expression of IL-1 beta and IL-12 P40, suggesting that none of these components are in the sample, uh, which basically leaves us uh, mainly with lipid. So that's why we think it's, uh, the substance in the samples is predominantly lipid-based, but again, we would have to conduct more studies to follow up on that. Taken together, uh, carbohydrates and possibly lipid components of disease-associated P. acne strains may serve as potential ligands implicated in the induction of the inflammatory response that plays a role in the pathogenesis of acne vulgaris. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my uh, mentor, Professor Jenny Kim, and the help uh, of Dr. Kim and Dr. Uh, Agak, who I've uh, worked closely on this project with. Uh, the project was also supported by the Annenberg and the MCJ uh, Emilio Foundations and through a research grant provided by the Dermatological Research Foundation of California. Of course, our collaborators at UCSD and our fellow lab members. Questions? Yes. You have to wait for the mic. Did you say that you autoclaved your samples? Yes. The, as when the part of the protocol of extracting the, um, the carbohydrates from the aqueous phase, you first have to preheat and kill the bacterial pellet that you wash down and create, and only then continue with uh, mixing it with phenol and extracting the, uh, the samples. Are you concerned that that could destroy your carbohydrates? Some of them are heat sensitive, or that you could be causing a Maillard reaction during autoclaving and making new compounds? So no, I was more concerned about protein contaminants, to be quite truthful. <laughs> um, but that is a good point, and it was brought up with the experts at UCSD, and they believe that um, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but again, to verify that, we will attempt to be extracting the carbohydrates by a different method as well, not through phenol repeating the experiment and seeing if we're getting the same results, and that way we could kind of uh, make sure that we're seeing it from a different angle. After the DNA extraction that you did, they should be dead anyway, honestly. So. All right, uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. You're welcome. Yep. That's okay, yeah, you do. <laughs> so along with the enzymatic or chemical sort of breakage of those glycosidic bonds that you're looking to do going forward with your cytokine analysis, mm -hmm. have you thought about going to particular synthesized uh, glycosidic linkages? So either, you know, you know, disaccharide or polysaccharides where you could, you know, get them from Cayman Chemical Company or Sigma in order to address the particular ones that you're seeing by your GCMS experiments to add to define PDMC cultures, or sorry, again, for your cytokines. Uh, that's a good point. I haven't considered that. Uh, we first, the first step that we thought of doing was kind of just breaking up those linkage in a non-specific pattern. Um, and, and, you know, the hypothesis is that if it is a specific composition of the carbohydrates that's attaching to the ligand, if we break up that composition, that should potentially inhibit the, you know, the instigation of the entire inflammatory cascade and reduce our ELISA. So that was kind of our thought process moving forward. But that, that, that's a good idea to, to double check that. If, if, that, if it's that positive, then that would probably be the next step. 
Thank you. Any more questions? I'm in the hot seat. This is your opportunity. <laughs> Thank you very much.